Good morning, everybody. Happy Tuesday. Um, nice to see you back here after a long weekend. I hope you enjoyed it. It's been so beautiful and sunny. I spent a lot of time in my garden, which makes me really happy. Um, but I'm happy to be back this morning to read to you. And today, again, thanks to my neighbors, um, we've raided their bookshelves and we're going to read uh, Iggy Peck Architect by Andrea Beatty. And you'll recognize this. Um, we have, uh, we have Ada Twist Scientist and we have Rosie Revere Engineer uh, in the library. And um, we don't have Iggy Peck Architect and I will be getting it because it's awesome. So um, it's in the same, same, you know, some kind of series. And um, you'll notice when we get to the class scenes that they're all in the same class. So I bet you can pick out Ada Twist um, I don't know if I've read Rosie to, to a lot of you, but I know I've read Ada Twist to a lot of you. So we'll, we'll pause there and make sure that we find uh, Ada in the class. So Iggy Peck Architect. And this one has, I think, the best rhymes out of all of them. They're all good, but this one, the rhymes are really good. All right, me and the camera here. Young Iggy Peck is an architect and has been since he was two, when he built a great tower in only an hour with nothing but diapers and glue. Good gracious, Ignatius, his mother exclaimed. That's the coolest thing I've ever seen. But her smile faded fast as a light wind blew past, and she realized those diapers weren't clean. And you could, if you look close at them, you can see they're not quite white. Ignatius, my son, what on earth have you done? That's disgusting and nasty. It stinks. But Iggy was gone. He was out on the lawn using dirt clods to build a great sphinx. <laughs> what I love about this is if you look at the cat, looks exactly like the sphinx. Now, when Iggy was three, his parents could see his unusual passion would stay. He built churches and chapels from peaches and apples and temples from modeling clay. <laughs> Love it. At dinner one night, to his father's delight, Iggy got a bright gleam in his eye and out on the porch built the St. Louis Arch from pancakes and coconut pie. It's just awesome, and I love his hair. All right, so now here we are in Miss Lila Greer's class, and see if you can find Ada Twist. All right, there she is, that's Ada Twist. And Rosie Revere, you might not um, remember, and I'm not sure I remember, but I think that's Rosie Revere. Dear Egg had it made until second grade when his teacher was Miss Lila Greer. On the very first day, she had this to say, we do not talk of buildings in here. Gothic or Romanesque, I couldn't care less about buildings ancient or new. She said in her lecture about architecture that it had no place in grade two. And how do you think that might make Iggy feel, All right? But if you notice, is it, what is he doing? He's building something, so maybe he's not even listening. And we'll find out why she, why she um, would say that, because it does seem a little out of character for her. That might seem severe, but she was sincere. For when she was no more than seven, she'd had a great fright at a dizzying height in a building so tall it scraped heaven. On an architect's tour of the 95th floor, young Lila got lost from the group. She was found two days later in a stuck elevator, eating cheese with a French circus troupe. After that day, it's quite safe to say she thought all building lovers were nuts. As a teacher, she taught that above all, one ought to avoid them, no ifs, ands, or buts. As you might guess, it would cause Iggy stress to hear such terrible talk. But he didn't hear. He sat in the rear while building a castle of chalk. You, Iggy Peck, your desk is a wreck. Tear down that castle right now. You will not build in here. Is that perfectly clear? Do you need to see Principal Howe? Uh-oh. 
No, ma'am, Iggy said. He lowered his head, and his heart sank down to the floor. With no chance to build, his interest was killed. Now second grade was a bore. And he doesn't look very excited, does he? It's tough when, when that happens. After 12 long days that passed in a haze of reading, writing, and arithmetic, Miss Greer took the class to Blue River Pass for a hike and an old-fashioned picnic. And you can see um, Iggy there at the bottom, the back of the line. Doesn't look too happy about being in school. They crossed an old trestle to a small island nestled in the heart of a burbling stream. But they no sooner passed than the footbridge collapsed and Miss Lila Greer started to scream. We're trapped here, oh my, alas kids, goodbye. Her eyeballs rolled back in her head. She dropped to the ground with a vague groaning sound, luckily fainted, not dead. How are they gonna get across there? Neither bridge broke, what are they going to do? The class was amazed. They stood there quite dazed, uncertain of what they should do. But one bright young man was off hatching a plan which started Miss Lila's was which started with Miss Lila's shoe. Soon each lad and lass there at Blue River Pass was working together as one. And when she came to, Miss Lila Greer knew that something quite brave had been done. She looked in the air and saw hanging there a structure with cables and braces. And on the far side, beaming with pride, were 17 smiling young faces. Boots, tree roots, and strings, fruit roll-up, roll-ups and things, some of which one should not mention, were stretched ridge to ridge in a glorious bridge, dangling from shoestring suspension. Now, is there something on that bridge that you think maybe you wouldn't talk about? I think I see somebody's underpants. Do you see them? Yep, right up there. It's like they're a flag for the bridge. I wonder, wonder who's not wearing underpants. Do you think those are Iggy's? I don't know. It all became clear to Miss Lila Greer as she crossed that bridge over the stream. There are worse things to do when you're in grade two than to spend your time building a dream. Now, every week at Blue River Creek, elementary in grade two, in second grade, all, ah, hold on, I'm all kerfluffled here. All the school kids can hear, along with Miss Greer, how the world's greatest buildings were made. The weekly guest speaker, in t-shirt and sneakers, talks of buildings from Rome to Quebec. Of course, he's the guy who builds towers from pie, that brilliant young man, Iggy the end. Have a great day today and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.